Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. The late Diana, Princess of Wales, was born the Honorable Diana Frances Spencer on July 1, 1961 in Norfolk. She received the style Lady Diana Spencer in 1975, when her father inherited his earldom. Lady Diana Spencer married the Prince of Wales at St. Paul's Cathedral in London on July 29, 1981. During her marriage the princess undertook a wide range of royal duties. Family was very important to the princess, who had two sons, Prince William and Prince Henry, Harry. After her divorce from the Prince of Wales, the princess continued to be regarded as a member of the royal family. Diana, Princess of Wales, died on Sunday, August 31, 1997, following a car crash in Paris. There was widespread public mourning at the death of this popular figure, culminating with her funeral at Westminster Abbey on Saturday, September 6, 1997. Even after her death, the princess's work lives on in the form of commemorative charities and projects set up to help those in need. Childhood and Teenage Years Diana, Princess of Wales, formerly Lady Diana Frances Spencer, was born on July 1, 1961 at Park House near Sandringham, Norfolk. She was the youngest daughter of the then Viscount and Viscountess Althorpe, now the late, eighth, Earl Spencer, and the late Honorable Mrs. Shand Kidd, daughter of the fourth Baron Fermoy. Until her father inherited the earldom, she was styled the Honorable Diana Spencer. Viscount, Viscount Althorpe was equerry to George VI from 1950 to 1952, and to the Queen from 1952 to 1954. Lady Diana's parents, who had married in 1954, separated in 1967, and the marriage was dissolved in 1969. Earl Spencer later married Rain, Countess of Dartmouth in 1976. Together with her two elder sisters Sarah, born 1955, Jane, born 1957, and her brother Charles, born 1964, Diana continued to live with her father at Park House, Sandringham, until the death of her grandfather, the seventh Earl Spencer. In 1975, the family moved to the Spencer seat at Althorpe, a stately house dating from 1508, in Northamptonshire, in the English Midlands. Lady Diana was educated first at a preparatory school, Riddlesworth Hall at Dis, Norfolk, and then in 1974 went as a boarder to West Heath, near Sevenoaks, Kent. At school she showed a particular talent for music, as an accomplished pianist, dancing and domestic science, and gained the school's award for the girl giving maximum help to the school and her schoolfellows. She left West Heath in 1977, and went to finishing school at the Institut Alpen Weidmanet in Rougemont, Switzerland, which she left after the Easter term of 1978. The following year she moved to a flat in Colhoun Court, London. For a while she looked after the child of an American couple, and she worked as a kindergarten teacher at the Young England School in Pimlico. Marriage and Family On February 24, 1981 it was officially announced that Lady Diana was to marry the Prince of Wales. As neighbors at Sandringham until 1975, their families had known each other for many years, and Lady Diana, and the prince had met again when he was invited to a weekend at Althorpe in November 1977. They were married at St. Paul's Cathedral in London on July 29, 1981, in a ceremony which drew a global television and radio audience estimated at around one million people and hundreds of thousands of people lining the route from Buckingham Palace to the cathedral. The wedding reception was at Buckingham Palace. The marriage was solemnized by the Archbishop of Canterbury Dr. Runcie, together with the Dean of St. Paul's, clergy from other denominations read prayers. Music included the hymns Christ is made the sure foundation, I vow to thee my country, the anthem I was glad, by Sir Hubert Perry, a specially composed anthem Let the People Praise Thee by Professor Matthias, and Handel's Let the Bright Seraphim performed by Dame Kiri T. Konawa. The lesson was read by the Speaker of the House of Commons, Mr. George Thomas, the late Lord Tony Pandy. The princess was the first Englishwoman to marry an heir to the throne for 300 years, when and Hyde married the future James II from whom the princess was descended. The bride wore a silk taffeta dress with a 25-foot train designed by the Emmanuels, 
Her veil was held in place by the Spencer family diamond tiara, and she carried a bouquet of gardenias, lilies of the valley, white freesia, golden roses, white orchids and stephanotis. She was attended by five bridesmaids, including Princess Margaret's daughter Lady Sarah Armstrong Jones, now Lady Sarah Chatto. Prince Andrew, now the Duke of York, and Prince Edward, now the Earl of Wessex, were the Prince of Wales's supporters, a royal custom instead of a best man. The Prince and Princess of Wales spent part of their honeymoon at the Mountbatten family home at Broadlands, Hampshire, before flying to Gibraltar to join the Royal Yacht HMY Britannia for a 12-day cruise through the Mediterranean to Egypt. They finished their honeymoon with a stay at Balmoral. The Prince and Princess made their principal home at Highgrove House near Tetbury, Gloucestershire, with an apartment in Kensington Palace as their London home. They had two sons. Prince William Arthur Philip Lewis was born on June 21, 1982, and Prince Henry, Harry, Charles Albert David on September 15, 1984, both at St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington, in London. The Princess had 17 godchildren. In December 1992 it was announced that the Prince and Princess of Wales had agreed to separate. The Princess based her household and her office at Kensington Palace, while the Prince was based at St. James's Palace and continued to live at Highgrove. In November 1995 the Princess gave a television interview during which she spoke of her unhappiness in her personal life and the pressures of her public role. The Prince and Princess were divorced on August 28, 1996. The Prince and Princess continued to share equal responsibility for the upbringing of their children. The princess continued to be regarded as a member of the royal family. The queen, the prince and the princess of Wales agreed that the princess was to be known after the divorce as Diana, princess of Wales, without the style of her royal highness, as the princess was given the style HRH on marriage she would therefore be expected to give it up on divorce. The princess continued to live at Kensington Palace, with her office based there. Princess D rapidly evolved into an icon of grace, elegance, and glamour. Exuding natural charm and charisma, she used her celebrity status to aid numerous charitable causes, and her changing hairstyles and wardrobe made her a fashion trendsetter. Behind the scenes, however, marital difficulties between the princess and prince were growing. Diana struggled with severe postnatal depression, low self-esteem, eating disorders, and the mounting strain of being constantly pursued by both the official media royal watchers and the tabloid press, particularly the paparazzi. The marital breakdown became increasingly apparent amid mutual recriminations, tell-all biographies, and admissions of infidelity on both sides, and the couple formally separated in 1992. Diana presented her side in Andrew Morton's controversial book Diana, Her True Story, 1992, and in an unusually candid television interview in 1995. Public Role After her marriage, the Princess of Wales quickly became involved in the official duties of the royal family. Her first tour with the Prince of Wales was a three-day visit to Wales in October 1981. In 1983 she accompanied the Prince on a tour of Australia and New Zealand, and they took the infant Prince William with them. Prince William, with Prince Harry, again joined the Prince and Princess of Wales at the end of their tour to Italy in 1985. Other official overseas visits undertaken with the prince included Australia, for the bicentenary celebrations in 1988, Brazil, India, Canada, Nigeria, Cameroon, Indonesia, Spain, Italy, France, Portugal and Japan, for the enthronement of Emperor Akihito. Their last joint overseas visit was to South Korea in 1992. The princess's first official visit overseas on her own was in September 1982, when she represented the Queen at the state funeral of Princess Grace of Monaco. The princess's first solo overseas tour was in February 1984, when she travelled to Norway to attend a performance of Carmen by the London City Ballet, of which she was patron. The princess subsequently visited many countries including Germany, the United States, Pakistan, Switzerland, Hungary, Egypt, Belgium, France, South Africa, Zimbabwe and Nepal. Although the princess was renowned for her style, and was closely associated with the fashion world, patronizing and raising the profile of younger British designers, designers, she was best known for her charitable work. During her marriage, 
the princess was president or patron of over 100 charities. The princess did much to publicize work on behalf of homeless and also disabled people, children and people with HIV and AIDS. In December 1993, the princess announced that she would be reducing the extent of her public life in order to combine a meaningful public role with a more private life. After her separation from the Prince of Wales, the princess continued to appear with the royal family on major national occasions, such as the commemorations of the 50th anniversary of Victory in Europe and Victory over Japan, days in 1995. Following her divorce, the princess resigned most of her charity and other patronages and relinquished all her service appointments with military units. The princess remained as patron of Centerpoint, Homeless Charity, English National Ballet, Leprosy Mission, and National AIDS Trust, and as president of the Hospital for Sick Children, Great Ormond Street, and of the Royal Marsden Hospital. In June 1997, the princess attended receptions in London and New York as previews of the sale of a number of dresses and suits worn by her on official engagements, with the proceeds going to charity. The princess spent her 36th and last birthday on July 1, 1997 attending the Tate Gallery's 100th anniversary celebrations. Her last official engagement in Britain was on July 21, when she visited Northwick Park Hospital, London, Children's Accident and Emergency Unit. In the year before her death, the princess was an active campaigner for a ban on the manufacture and use of landmines. In January 1997, she visited Angola as part of her campaign. In June, the princess spoke at the Landmines Conference at the Royal Geographical Society in London, and this was followed by a visit to Washington, D.C. in the United States on 17-18 June to promote the American Red Cross Landmines, Landmines campaign. Separately, she also met Mother Teresa in the Bronx, New York. The princess's last public engagements were during her visit to Bosnia from 7 to August 10, when she visited landmine projects in Travnik, Sarajevo, and Zanezica. It was in recognition of her charity work that representatives of the charities with which she worked during her life were invited to walk behind her coffin with her family from St. James's Palace to Westminster Abbey on the day of her funeral. Charities and Patronages After her marriage, the Princess of Wales quickly became involved in the official duties of the royal family. Although the princess was renowned for her style and was closely associated with the fashion world, patronizing and raising the profile of younger British designers, she was best known for her charitable work. Following her divorce, the princess resigned most of her charity and other patronages and relinquished all her service appointments with military units. The princess remained as patron of Centerpoint, Homeless Charity, English National Ballet, Leprosy Mission, and National AIDS Trust, and as president of the Hospital for Sick Children, Great Ormond Street, and of the Royal Marsden Hospital. In June 1997, the princess attended receptions in London and New York as previews of the sale of a number of dresses and suits worn by her on official engagements, with the proceeds going to charity. Di princess Diana's Death Inquiry Though the photographers were initially blamed for causing the accident, a French judge in 1999 cleared them of any wrongdoing, instead faulting Paul, who was found to have had a blood alcohol level over the legal limit at the time of the crash and to have taken prescription drugs incompatible with alcohol. In 2006 a Scotland Yard inquiry into the incident also concluded that the driver was at fault. In April 2008, however, a British inquest jury ruled both the driver and the paparazzi guilty of unlawful killing through grossly negligent driving, though it found no evidence of a conspiracy to kill Diana, or Fayed, an accusation long made by Fayed's father. Her death produced unprecedented expressions of public mourning, testifying to her enormous hold on the British national psyche. The royal family, apparently caught off guard by the extraordinary outpouring of grief, and by criticism of their emotional reticence, broke with tradition in arranging the internationally televised royal funeral. The image of Prince William, then age 15, and Prince Harry, then age 12, walking solemnly with their father behind Diana's casket in her funeral cortege became iconic. At Diana's funeral Sir Elton John performed a version of his classic song Candle in the Wind, originally written about actress Marilyn Monroe, with lyrics that had been revised by his songwriting partner, Bernie Toppin to reflect on the life and death of Diana, including 
The recording of that version of the song became the most successful pop single in history to date, selling more than 30 million copies. Diana's life and her death polarized national feeling about the existing system of monarchy and, in a sense, about British identity, which appeared antiquated and unfeeling in a populist age of media celebrity in which Diana herself was a central figure. Thank you for watching. See you again for another interesting facts and stories, and please like and subscribe.